My name is Mackenzie Drebbit, and today we're going to talk about diets. One in particular diet that you may have heard of is called the keto diet. Now the keto diet um, is a low carb diet, like the Atkins diet. And their claim to fame is that you have a higher intake of protein, lower intake of carbohydrates, lower intake of fat, and then you're going to get an increase in fat loss and you will lose weight on this diet. So we're going to look at that a little bit and how the body functions and break this down. Now with the keto diet or ketogenic diets in general, um, some of the recommendations that they have for your food sources is as follows. They say you should base your diet around these healthy foods meats, beef, pork, lamb, chicken, bacon, and others, fatty fish and seafoods like salmon, trout, sardines, eggs, the healthiest eggs are omega-3 enriched or pastured, low-carb vegetables, kale, spinach, broccoli, asparagus, and others, full-fat dairy, butter, cheese, cream, full-fat yogurt, nuts and seeds, almonds, macadamia nuts, walnuts, sunflower seeds, etc., healthy fats, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, avocados, and avocado oil. As long as you base your meals around these uh, fatty protein source with vegetables, nuts, and some healthy fats, you will lose weight. It's that simple. So that's kind of one of the uh, structures that they show is beneficial for losing weight. Now when we're talking about diets, most people think of a diet as something that, you know, it could be a New Year's resolution or it's something that you're going to go on and later off you're going to go off of. Now we should be striving not for short-term diets, but we should be looking at long-term health changes and lifestyle changes, lifestyle diet changes that are going to have a long-lasting effect and be the most helpful for our body to function properly because not all health is just about losing weight. There is a certain aspect of that, being overweight is not healthy and can increase your risk of many other diseases, but it's not all about losing weight. And you can lose weight and still be extremely unhealthy. So let's check out some uh, diets that we see in the Bible. Now the first diet that we see in the whole Bible is in Genesis. Genesis 1 verse 29 to 31 And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given thee every herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we see here that the first diet that was introduced was a purely plant-based diet. And typically when we hear the word meat, we're thinking of animal foods or flesh foods. But in the Bible, Meat means food in general. So it says here that the fruit of the tree yielding seed, it shall be for meat, so for food. So here we have a plant-based diet. Now let's look at another diet that we see in the Bible. And this is the diet of John the Baptist. And we see this in Matthew 3 verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Now when we first read that or if you're first reading over it you might think he was eating grasshoppers but since he had a special mission and a special goal for his life he had a very special diet as well. And locust is actually a term for the carob pod or the carob bean, which was natively growing in the deserts in that area. And we can confirm this actually. Ellen White talks about this. And she says, 
his diet purely vegetable of locusts and wild honey was a rebuke to the indulgence of appetite and the gluttony that everywhere prevailed. So if it was purely vegetable, then locust has to be a vegetable. And it is. It is the locust pod. Now another diet that we see in the Bible is in Daniel. Daniel and his three friends when they were first taken captive into Babylon. Let's see what they were eating. Daniel 1 verse 12. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. What is pulse? Well, if you look what the definition of pulse is, it is beans, lentils, peas, any of the form of legumes. And another, another way that is also interpreted is vegetables. But specifically, it is legumes. So it's actually high protein. So does that mean that keto is the right form of diet for us? Well, let's take a look here. One of the issues with keto is that most of the protein source comes from animals, which causes its own health implications. And actually, you can see that we have a series called Life at Its Best that goes very in-depth about all these things. But animal products can be very acidic, and even the protein causes very high acidity in the body, which then can rob calcium from the bones in order to neutralize that protein. And that's another issue with the keto diet in general. When you have a really high protein content in your body, more than what is adequate, and you're trying to burn all of that protein, it, be, it makes the body very acidic, even if it is plant-based proteins. Now, it is less if it's plant-based, but you're still getting an acidic effect because the excess protein in order to be extruded. Now remember, proteins, amino acids, so they're acids. And that acid needs to be neutralized. Typically that is done by calcium. And where does it usually pull that calcium from? From your bones. And then that can lead to osteoporosis because of the leaching of the calcium out of the bones. So that is one dangerous thing that can be a side effect of a really high protein diet. Now what is high? Because for some it may appear to be one thing, for some it may appear to be another thing. A really good resource for many of this information is in this book, Back to Eden. It is one of my favorite books. It's a chubby little book and it's actually quite an easy read. It has many, many good health principles in here as well as talks about the use of herbs and diet. I would definitely recommend getting one of these books. And he actually talks in this book, Jethro Kloss, about some of the ratios that you should be eating of different foods and why. Typically it's done by percentage of calories or it can also be done by body weight. So some of the measurements are uh, protein recommendations. Your minimum would be around 0.36 grams per pound of body weight uh, all the way up to the maximum really needed is 0.75 grams per pound of body weight. And why that is, is as a baby, that is the fastest pace at which a human grows. And they're getting in about 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And there's no way that as an adult, you're gonna grow faster than that. It doesn't matter how much work you're putting in. So carbohydrates, 1.5 grams per pound of body weight per day and healthy fats can vary depending on how many carbohydrates you're eating, how, many, uh, how much protein you're eating, but that can range anywhere from 0.5 to 0.65 grams per pound of body weight. And we have to remember also that each of these macronutrients, so protein, fats, and carbohydrates, have different calorie counts protein and carbohydrates both have four calories per gram, but fats have nine calories per gram. So for an example, let's say we have 
a person that weighs 180 pounds. So remember, the base metabolic rate must be met in order for the body to function properly. So if they're 180 pounds, we're going to times that by 10. So their BMR is 1800 calories. So now we can divide that out. Their protein being 10 to 35% of the overall calorie count. Carbohydrates can be 45 to 65%. And then fats should be no higher than 30% or around 30%. So for this person that is 800, uh, 180 pounds, you might have uh, be taking in 65 grams to all the way up to over 100 grams of protein per day, depending on the activity level, how much... Um, stress they're putting on the muscles, the breaking down of the muscles in order to repair those muscles. Fats, you're going to be taking in then about 70 to 100 grams per day. And carbohydrates, around 270 grams of carbohydrates per day. So that's how you want to structure your meals, is around these macronutrients. And then as you get a little bit deeper learning the micronutrients, some of the minor things inside there. But if you keep it simple to your protein needs, your fat needs, and your carbohydrate needs, then you're gonna make sure that you're overall getting your minimum daily requirement of all the things your body needs to function. So if you keep your protein levels around 10 to 35%, carbohydrates, like we said, around 45 to 65, and then your fats under or up to around 30%. And that should give you a really good base of how you should be structuring your meals. We don't want to be going into these diets that are a short-term thing just to lose weight. If our body is functioning properly and at its best result because we're following all the laws of health, then our body will adjust and it'll sit at its proper levels. If not, then we need to see where we may be lacking in certain areas, adjust those things, understand what's happening, and then we can make adjustments appropriately. I hope this information was helpful to you and helped you to understand how your body works a little bit better, and we'll see you next time.